Yeah, these are messy. <laughs> So I'm Eric Palmquist and this is Palmquist Studios in Los Angeles, California. When I collect gear, I'm just looking for pieces that I don't have and also pieces that um, I collect very slowly. And uh, I'd like to just build up pieces that I know are going to last and be the sounds that I want and sounds that make my job easier. <laughs> this amp is this old uh, Watkins Scout. Vox used their schematics for that to make the AC-15. They're an incredible British amp. Uh, it's one of my favorites to record through. And then if I want something even older feeling, uh, this National is from the 50s and that's what I like about that is just anything I put through it, it won't get harsh at all. And so like, there's a lot of records where I've run vocals through that amp. There are other producers who, you go to them because they have that sound and it's super cool. And, but I really enjoy working with different genres. I really, uh, I feel like it keeps me fresh. I feel like, you know, I get to, learn new tricks by working with different types of artists who have different types of backgrounds. With Thrice, uh, we had a lot of conversations leading up to making the record, and we met uh, for months leading up to it, and they, not only do they have a long career, but they've also played around with a lot of different sounds. They've experimented in super hard stuff, and really kind of spacey, mellow stuff. But through conversations and knowing what they were into and what excited them. That's what built the inspiration in, for how we were gonna record it. I mean, that EMT box looks like shit, but it's cool as fuck. So this thing that looks like it's holding boards and gobos is my EMT plate that came from A&M Records when they sold off some gear before they went to Henson. And I guess the word is that John Lennon sang through it during some Plastic Ono Band sessions and that it was the snare reverb for Metallica's Black Album. But, yeah, but it sounds amazing and it's just that, it's that sound that you hear on every record and, and you love that reverb sound. On this Bad Sun song from, from the first recordings that we did on the song 20 Years, I think we took a guitar track from the demo and then ran that through a rainbow machine, and then I did some reverse effects through my Eventide H3500, and then into my EMT plate reverb. It depends on the artist. With, with some artists, uh, like if I'm starting with a new band and we're trying to find their sound, I call it my pedal pile, but it usually just ends up being a pile of pedals on the floor that we're plugging stuff in and out. But if it's a more established band, then a lot of times they'll have their thing to, you know, their sound together and I'm not trying to tear it down, but maybe there's a part that needs an X factor or something that needs, uh, something surprising or something a bit more modulating. The Warden gets used on a lot of records. Clean guitars. Um, it just, it keeps them punchy and articulate. A band called Chunt, that's an instrumental band. We did their last record, and now they both have these in their live rig, and you know, it's what they do, is this Warden pedal. Maybe you don't hear it, but one of my favorite things to do with sounds is just give it that little bit that like when you listen to a record and you're like, oh, that sounds cool, but I don't quite know what they did or whatever. And I feel like um, a little bit of the Grand Orbiter always kind of gives that, that sense of, um, of space. And you can go extreme with it, but you can also uh, just have it be a nice little, Je ne sais quoi, 
you know. When you learn an effect really well, you can control it and orchestrate with it in that way, but then there's also uh, the excitement of just pl plugging in something new, and all of a sudden there's an immediate reaction, you record it, and yeah. it's done. <laughs>